So um, welcome everyone. Uh, this is our eighth and final webinar as part of our Mass City, Banbridge and Craig Avonborough Council's Digital Support Programme. Um, and today's webinar focuses on creating an influencer marketing strategy for your business. So just before we begin and I hand over to Clara, I'm just going to run through a little bit of housekeeping. So just so you know, today's webinar should last approximately 90 minutes. And um, there's no specific breaks planned in the middle, but if you need a tea, coffee, anything, you can come and go as you please. We have allocated a short amount of time for a Q&A at the end, but you can use the Q&A function on Zoom or the chat. I will be, Clara will be presenting, but I will be here the whole time to answer any of your questions. And I'll put any questions that I'm unable to answer to Clara at the end as well, if they come through. Um, you have the option whenever you're sending a question, you can choose to send it to everyone. So it's visible that ev to everyone that's joined this webinar, or you can just send it to the host and the uh, presenter privately. So you'll see that option when you go to send. And um, we are recording in this webinar, but only myself and Clara will be visible throughout that. No one else in that is attending the webinar will be seen on the screen. So just before we hand over to Clara to get started, we have a short welcome from the Lord Mayor. Good morning and welcome to this webinar about creating an influencer marketing strategy for your business. An increasing number of businesses are using influencer marketing to raise brand awareness and drive traffic to their own social media channels or websites. It's a modern day equivalent of celebrity endorsements with Google searches for influencer marketing increasing 400% since 2016. This webinar will provide you with a practical guide on how to get started with influencer marketing from finding the right influencer to agreeing terms. This webinar is the last in our series of eight webinars delivered as part of Council's digital support program for local businesses. All webinars have been recorded and uploaded onto Council's website for future reference. I would like to introduce Clara Maben, who is the mentor in the Council's Digital Support Programme. I hope you enjoy the session this morning and thank you and find it useful. Great. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. If, if Clara, you want to go ahead and share your screen. Yep, perfect. I'll just bring it up now fully. Okay, doke. Hi, everybody. How are we all this Thursday morning? beautiful morning it is too well i suppose that depends on wherever you are in northern ireland but anyway so yes my name is um clara maven and this is just um i'll get cracking through the way and um, this is just a brief overview of what i'm going to cover today so an intro what is an influencer types of influencers interesting st statistics the benefits of influencer marketing how to find influencers influencer outreach, choosing goals for your campaign, and then measuring performance, and then um, Q&As. But like Kara said, if you have any questions, just drop them into the chat box and we'll pick them up then at the end. So, um, oh. so who am I? Um, so I am, my name is Clara, and I'm the owner of So Social Marketing based in OMA since 2012. Um, I also lecture part-time um, digital and digital marketing in the Southwest College in Oma. Um, um, and with the so social marketing, we have won various awards over the years, um, with McBride Spar being won and BA components. I used to um, work for those guys in Cookstown and um, best online social media campaign and best B2B campaign at the Digital Advertising Northern Ireland Awards. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about me and you will get me over on Instagram at so social NI or on Facebook, so social marketing. So feel free if you are on Instagram to go on and have, um, give us a follow or give us a tag today. Um, if you learn anything interesting. Um, so just a quick poll before we actually get started. I just wanna see, um, has anybody any experience using influencers? So. Um, I just would, if you want to just quickly um, hit yes or no, I just want to see the percentage um, difference um, in who has been using them and who hasn't. So it's interesting to see here now. So a lot of people are saying no. Because um, I know it is, it's a relatively new in the last couple of years. You know, it's really, really, really taken off and businesses are seeing the benefit of it. So um, most people are saying, no, they haven't used influencer marketing. So that's good. Um, then hopefully um, you'll be able to pick up some great tips today 
and get started. Um, so what is an influencer then? Okay. So the dictionary now has a definition of what is an influencer. A person or thing that influences influences somebody, something, especially a person with the ability to influence potential buyers of a product or service recommended by recommended it, recommending it on social media. So love them or loathe them, influencers are, are here for, um, well, for the foreseeable. Um, basically, influencers are um, so people in social media who have built up a reputation for their knowledge and expertise on a specific topic. They make regular posts about um, that topic on their preferred social media channel and generate large followings um, of enthusiastic, engaged people who pay close attention to their views. Brands love social media influencers because they can create trends and encourage their following to buy the product. Um, it's important to note that these individuals are not merely marketing tools, but rather social um, relationship assets which um, brands can collaborate to achieve their marketing objectives. So that's just like a, a, a more in-depth definition of what an influencer actually is. So what are the different types of influencers? Um, so there's quite a few different types of influencers and this little diagram here shows you like the different types by reach. So anybody that was, is, you know, one million plus is probably a celebrity. Um, and they're like a mega influencer. And then any, anyone between 500 or half a million and a million is called a macro influencer. Then you have between 50,000 and five and half a million mid tier. And most people, you know, in Northern Ireland, small scale sort of businesses are gonna be working with probably influencers in around this mark here, um, the micro and the nano. So between 10, um, well, depend on your budget that is obviously but most people that I that I've dealt with it's more um when I say smaller scale like anything up to 50 60 thousand is, is an excellent following for somebody um in um Northern Ireland as a region so um the 10 the 10 thousand to 50 thousand and then there's 1 thousand to 10 thousand and those are called nano influencers okay so the secret to running a successful influencer campaign lies in identifying the right influencers for your brand to do so, it is vital to know the different types of influencers that you can collaborate with. Based on the number of followers, the social media influencers are divided into those five categories, okay? So, um, like a lot of people that are maybe new to in, um, influencer marketing might be like, oh, well, sure, let's get Molly May from who was in Love Island, or let's get, like, you know, sort of an famous TV famous sort of um, influencers. It's highly unlikely that you're going to get those unless you have obviously a massive, massive budget to work with those. So um, it's trying to research and discover the ones that are probably going to be in around this range that are going to be extremely beneficial to your business. So the nano influencers, so anybody from like 1,000 to 10,000, it doesn't sound like a lot. It takes a long time to build up your influencers or sorry, to build up your followers um, on Instagram, for example. So nano influencers have a highly engaged social media community. These types of influencers share a close bond with their followers and their recommendations are highly valued. Nano influencers are the right choice for you if you're a small company or working on a tight budget and want to spread awareness about your brand. They also um, tend to have um, the highest average engagement rate amongst all influencers at about 4%. So, they're not to be they're not to be um sniffed at those with the under 10k following their content creation can be excellent they have a strong local following um and people watch their stories all the time so there's a real sense of um, authenticity there so the nano influencers are um yeah they're brilliant and then you have the micro influencers so the 10k to 100 um micro influencers have a decent follower account much more than nano influencers. They put in a lot more effort to engage their followers with high quality content. They're often seen as an authority in a specific niche and usually have some degree of brand experience. Brands can leverage the power of micro influencers to reach out to a fairly large audience in a targeted niche. Um, the macro influencers can be called internet celebrities or social media stars. 
um, famous YouTubers, food bloggers, podcasters, and many more fall into this category. These types of influencers are not born overnight. Um, they would make their way up the ladder with a lot of effort and dedication. Um, that's why macro influencers are usually considered an authority in their niche. You know, you could sort of think like, like the likes of Joe Wicks, you know, like he's a household um, common name now, but he started out like doing YouTube videos and, and made his way across to Instagram. So um, people like that there who have been around for quite a few years and just built up their following quite steadily. So they're the best choice for spreading brand awareness um, as they, they would have a massive reach. And then the mega influencers, so um, are usually actors, pop stars, fashion icons, and other public figures. Um, although they have an enormous following, um, the percentage of engagement they generate is the least compared to other types of influencers. So their average engagement rate is about 0.8%. Um, you know, this may be helpful in building brand awareness, but you need to have a healthy marketing budget to be able to afford them. And again, like, Sometimes people just get too caught up in thinking they need to have um, an influencer on board that has got massive, massive following, and that's not always the case. So then in Northern Ireland, we, like there is such um, a great, um, there's such a great network of influencers and uh, um, down south as well. But I'm going to just focus here on a few in Northern Ireland. So these are quite a few great, I'm sure you of all, anybody that uses Instagram, has probably heard of um, Nathan and um, Board of Lunch. And this was actually, um, I created this webinar last month. And um, since then he's actually had half a million followers. So um, he is the guy that does all like the slow cooker maze and all that there. And um, he started it in lockdown and just has taken off since. And then you have Jim Moore, only slagging. He's brilliant too, his content's excellent. He does, oh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, I thought there was another one coming there. Sorry, excuse me. Um, he does a lot of short and snappy, like the camera angle and all the editing is brilliant. Um, for food and then Big Daddy Slims again, he has 20, um, 20 just nearly 21,000 followers. Um, and he's very, very good as well. So you can see like there's a massive difference in the followers here, like, you know, 20,000 up to half a million, you know, big difference there, but they all have their, you know, their niche and their dedicated followers. So um, if you are a food business, um, thinking about different food influencers um, to work with was great. And then, so they're different lifestyle influencers. These are just a few that I've picked out. Um, again based um, in Northern Ireland so enjoy everything Emma she is a mum of three based in Tyrone then you have Caroline O'Neill Dig Mama again um, mum of three based in Tyrone as well um, 60 nearly 60,000 followers India Sasha so she is um, based in I think I'm not I'm not 100% sure where she's based but she um, is an activist for um, uh, disability and um, she has she's quite massive on TikTok as well. I think she's bigger on TikTok than she is on Instagram with um so 82,000 followers. And then you have Anna. So um Anna's content is absolutely beautiful, like extremely well um crafted and created. Um her photographs are amazing. Um, she's 102,000 followers and she is based in the North Coast, I believe. Um and then we have oh sorry. Don't want to go out of this. Um, so there are quite a few beauty influencers. Um, we have Olivia McVeigh. So she's a makeup artist from Cookstown. Um, she has nearly 77,000 followers. You have Emma Kearney. She is from Armagh. And she is um, very popular with, like, again, the like quite young, like, um, teens, early 20s. Um, demographic and she has a massive TikTok following as well um, as 146,000 on Instagram and then you have Grania McCoy so she um, is an entrepreneur she has a shop a makeup and beauty sh shop um, in the Armagh region I think and she has 90,000 um, followers so that's just a few beauty influencers um, for you to have a little look at and then home influencers there's like literally a category for every <laughs> 
everything that you can think of. So um, Jill there, um, home at Rose Cottage, um, Jill has, she's Lisbon based and um, she's around 24,000 followers. Um, her content again is beautiful um, and her videos are excellent. Um, then you have the Homebird NI, so she's sitting at around 13,000 followers and she's more um, mid Ulster based. And then inside number 16, 101,000 followers as well. Um, so that's just a few popular home influencers from Northern Ireland. And then the fashion influencers, um, we have Ashley Gallagher here, she's 18 and a half thousand followers. Denise Kern, um, Armagh based, I think 28,000 followers. And then also Femme Ashley, um, I think she's up around um, Balamina sort of direction, um, 72,000 followers. Her video content is amazing. Um, she's so good at the editing and um, she has two girls as well. So yeah. I suppose, you know, she does a lot of family stuff as well. And oh, keep clicking the wrong button there, sorry. So um, that's just, um, I just wanted to show you some examples of different influencers that are available. You know, you do need to, if this is completely, completely new to you, um, you do need to sit down and do a bit of research around like who it is that you want to work with. Um, like if you're totally new to it and you don't know where to start, like, ask some if you know ask some younger people maybe who use social media within your family or friends like who do they follow who do they look who do they like look at their stories every day um, and go on then and do a bit of research look at their content see who follows them you know look up different hashtags like na blogger um on instagram and see who comes up um, and that's basically how you do your research it, it can be um quite tedious but there are also other agencies and stuff in Northern Ireland that specialize in um, bloggers like they have databases obviously of them but it's going to cost you money and um, to access that information and if you have the budget all well and good but if you're starting afresh then um, it's just going to take a bit of groundwork to get started. So set your goals before you begin um, vetting influencers and then find out um, those that best align with your brand your audience and your objective. So what is it? Like, what is your um, what is your business? Um, what is the product or service that you want to push? You know, you need to know the age of the person that you're ideally wanting to target. You want you need to know like what what are their interests? What what makes them tick? And then from there, go looking then for your um your influencer or influencers. Mm -hmm. So here are some interesting stats. So um, ninety three percent of marketers have used influencer marketing. So influencer marketing has become a major marketing strategy. Only 7% of marketeers um, surveyed have never used influencer marketing. Um, and 61, so these are just some more interesting stats that I got um, online. So 61% of consumers trust influencer recommendations. So a recommendation from a creator that you like you goes a long way. So 61% of consumers trust the product recommendations they will get from influencers. Meanwhile, only 38% trust branded social media content. So it's it's really interesting and it just shows you that it works. So I personally as well, like I I <laughs> I do marketing and I plan some campaigns and strategies and I'll still be sucked in by some of the things that there's people are selling or promoting. And I'd be like, I really want to try that big tan because I seen her using it. Um, so, and I would trust somebody's recommendation, like an influencer over the likes of a paid ad or, a, you know, um, billboard campaign traditionally and things like that there. So um, then micro influencers are on the rise. So growing from 89 to 91% in 2021. Um, luckily you don't need to have, um, Sorry. Luckily, you don't need to have millions of followers to become an influencer. Um, micro influencers can often just have as big an impact as those with the larger following due to highly um, engaged and loyal communities. Influencer marketing statistics show that the market share of uh, micro influencers grew from 89% to 91% in 2021. And then this is interesting here. Google searches for influencer marketing grew by 400% in the UK from 2016 to 2021. In 2016, it probably wasn't even a thing. It used to be um, like in around that time, it was more so um, people called people bloggers. And bloggers obviously traditionally 
would have had a website where they had um they generated like and they 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 had written content actual blog posts um and now so the, the new the new term a lot of people still use the word blogger but um the new term is, is influencer um and it's proof there that there's tons of interest in learning more and more about influencer marketing um as that's a massive massive increase in um uh, search results um so then the nano influencers again so that's the smallest ones that i was talking about from 1000 followers to 10,000. they have the highest engagement rate sitting at around between four and five percent um, and when trying to choose the right influencer for your campaign don't overlook those with the smaller following um five percent engagement rate beats out the mega influencers with the millions of followers and especially if you have a local product or service and um, they can really help um, to promote that or push that and i've used quite a few smaller scale ones and um they have been they've been excellent sorry um phone's ringing um okay so um the benefits then of influencers um Okay, okay. So the benefits of using influencers. So they build trust and authoritiveness. So the influencers have already built trust and close relationships with their fans and followers. People following them respect their recommendations and content. By collaborating with an influencer, not only would you have a wide base of the audience who trust you, but you will also gain their attention and that will help to drive sales quite quickly. Um, so it boosts brand, it helps you boost brand awareness and reputation. Um, influencers can improve your brand's um, awareness and visibility very quick. They can expand your position, position, positioning and online reach in a matter of days. People on social media will begin to know you, your products, your objective and what you offer and the solutions that you have for them. So focus on the millennials and the Gen Z consumers. So the millennials and the Gen Z are both the generations that are on social media. So those um, these help you to reach both of, this helps you to reach both of those generations. Influencer marketing specifically allows you to target people who want to see their content. This way you will have a wide reach to all the millennials and Gen Z cost consumers. And then obviously then there's a high ROI potential. So influencer marketing is less expensive than traditional marketing tactics. So if you collaborate with a popular influencer, you have the possibility of a massive, like a, quite a high return on investment. You would drive up sales more than you could imagine. And I do have some examples that um, I will I have one example in particular um, in terms of ROI that in, to show you, to discuss with you. Um, keep clicking into the bar so how to find influencers then so i did speak briefly about this um a few minutes ago about how to find them but um so firstly obviously i said you need to define your target audience so how do i do that so people people say to me well oh i i just i know my target audience and then when i ask them to actually write it down or break it down it, it seems quite harder to do so look at the people who buy from you now like what data do you store on them so like if you do um have a website or maybe you know in store like do you know what age your um customers are and um, do you know where they live do you know what sex they are do you know roughly how much money they spend with you and how often um all that sort of information is really important when it comes to defining your target audience and look, look as well at your audience insights and social media. So look, like some people say to me, oh, I know that my like average customer um, is aged, you know, 36 and they're all men. And then I'll go on to their social media and um, look at their insights and actually their following doesn't reflect what, you know, what they think. So um, see the age and gender breakdowns, education levels, job titles, relationship statuses and more. Find out what people like learn about people's interests and hobbies, learn about their lifestyles, audience insights, campaigns, relationship status and location to tell you about the types of people that are interested in your business. So every time you like a page on Facebook or follow somebody on Instagram, um, Facebook 
who you own Instagram will generate like a profile on you um, and put you into a certain category of um, person. So they know that I'm a 35 year old, they know that I'm a 35 year old married mother of two and I'll get served ads and they know what age my children are. Um, so I'll get served ads based on that sort of persona, that sort of target audience. Um, so the more information you give social media as a user, um, the more beneficial it is to those that work in marketing. Um, so an example target, target audience. So this, I suppose, could be me, a um, millennial mum under 35. Well, no, I'm 35 now, but not <laughs> under 35. University educated, loves fashion, health conscious. You're employed and the earnings, the earnings that she makes is 25,000 to 35,000 per year. So that I, I spoke earlier on about um, generation or Gen Z and millennial. And if you're not sure um, what they are, there's just a little diagram up here. So Gen Z is anybody born um, between 1995 and 2015. Um, so and then the millennial, so that would be anybody born between 1980 and 1994. So that would be my sort of category here. Then you have Gen, Gen X, so that would be um, born between 1965 and 1979. And then you have the baby boomer. So that um, would sort of be the grandparent, well, like my grandparents' age. So anybody born between 1944 to 1964. So that's just an example. That's a very brief example of what your like potential target audience stroke persona could look like. Um, so it's important to do all that there before you actually reach out to any influencers. And so why, why identify your audience? So when you identify your target audience for influencer marketing, it helps you choose the right influencers and those who have the right types of followers that are going to be interested in your product. So instead of creating generic items, you can develop super specific content that will get you noticed even more. Um, and then uh, customers and clients will feel like you're speaking directly to them and their problems, ensuring they will come back for more whenever they need it. So your target audience and your influencer audience, they both need to match. There's no point in you um, being a fake tan brand and reaching out to um, an influencer who doesn't necessarily wear makeup, doesn't, you know, um, doesn't, isn't a, isn't a beauty influencer, I suppose, uh, or, you know, doesn't necessarily use those sorts of products. Um, so your target audience, again, needs to, needs to match your influencer audience. Um, so start researching. So it's important to look into engagement rate, um, their average post reach, consistency of posting, shared values, post topics, audience interaction, and any sponsorship history that they've had before. So go on to like their influencers pages, like some influencers, you, you just need to be careful who you work with. You have to remember that they're going to be re representing your brand. Um, and if they are um, a bit of a wild like party animal, for example, um, you know, is that um, reflecting with your brand values and your brand personality? Is that who you want to be associated with? So just um, have a look uh, again at their topics that they've um, discussed on their stories, their topics that they've posted about on their grid, um, what sort of engagement they get on their posts. Um, and if they've worked sponsorship history, like if you are um, a TAM brand, do you want to be trying to do you want to be working with somebody who literally just opened a box of at your competitor's town last week? Um, you probably don't. So you want to work with somebody who's going to be quite authentic and and um, maybe hasn't worked with a particular brand like yourselves before. Because then an influencer can get a bad reputation where they're seen to be just working with whoever will who they can be seen to be just working with whoever is coming and offering them jobs and offering them money um, and where every day it's, it's something different. Um, and that's why it's important that you really research who you're going to be working with first and follow them a good bit beforehand before you reach out to them. 
So then people always say to me like about engagement rate. So like, how do you calculate engagement rate? There is no official Instagram engagement rate formula. So choose one of the following methods depending on what you're using it for, okay? So um, that's basically like, how to work out um, engagement rates. So this presentation is gonna be available for you anyway. So you can either take a picture of that now, you're screenshot it or um, so you have it or you'll have access to the presentation anyway after. So, um, so again, people say to me like, what is a good engagement rate? So um, as you can see here, like the engagement received for the, between the one and 5,000, um, or like, you know, between one to 10, I think the average engagement rate on Instagram is roughly five and a half percent, which is brilliant. And you can see that get less and less and less as you increase with um, the follower um, count. So um, yeah, like it, it's just um, interesting to keep that in mind. Um, so engagement then, so what is engagement? It's an indicator of how interactive um, an influencer's audience is with content. Um, do those readers respond? Like, do they like the post? Do they comment on the post? Do they share the post? Um, and then again, reach, while not um, the most important metric, reach is certainly a valid consideration. However, you should resist the urge to, um, not to only look at unique visitors as a measure of reach. Traffic and followers are only meaningful to the extent that the influencer is reaching your brand's target audience. Consistency. So when an influencer is consistently posting high quality content on a regular basis, readers are more likely to return, engage and, and share. Influencers who don't post very frequently um, will tend to have a higher rate of turnover like few return visitors and less loyalty. So have a look at the grid and have a look at how often they post. Is it every few days? Is it once a month? Um, you know, are they more active on stories every day? <laughs> that sort of thing. And then authenticity. So influencers who have a smaller ratio of sponsored content tend to be more trusted and appear more authentic. So like I said previously, influencers who literally you know you can go onto somebody's stories and xyz could be working with oh i'm just coming on here to talk about this sponsored post about tan i'm just coming and then the next day oh i'm away to this furniture shop and i'm doing a sponsored post for that and then the next day it's something completely different and um, so the <laughs> the less less is more and um, because people get disillusioned with um sponsored content and they see it as just an opportunity for the, obviously them to make money which it is and that's again like they've worked hard to build their following and they're obviously more entitled to charge whatever it is that they want but um it definitely does seem less authentic as a user as a, as a reader um as a follower whenever um there is a heavy amount of sponsored content going out on their um, grid or their stories so this is actually really interesting so like I um it probably isn't 100% accurate but and it's also done in dollars you have to convert it back so it's an American um it's a website called influencermarketinghub.com the url is at the bottom there forward slash instagram money calculator so if you're working with an influencer or you're thinking about working with an influencer and they charge like the the they do charge um various prices. Um it can be hard to know what they're gonna charge. Um and some don't charge at all. Some smaller scale influencers who are just starting out, you know, under the under the ten thousand probably, you know, will do the some things for free. Um, and I know that that's a big bugaboo with businesses because they're like, oh, I'm not gifting, why would I send such and such something free? And um, but at the end of the day, that person has 20,000 followers and they've worked hard to earn that 20,000 followers. You wouldn't go to a newspaper, take out an ad and, and not pay for it, you know. Um, so it is slightly different, um, but they, they will, they do have press packs, stroke media packs where they will send you how much they're going to charge. But off the back of that, you can go in and use tools like this to see like how valuable they actually are. So all you do is type in their Instagram username at the top. So I've typed in this girl here and um, she's based down south. So 
she has 47,000 followers. Um, her average likes are sitting around 1,400, which is brilliant. So her engagement rate is 3%. So she could essentially charge you her post. If you wanted to work with Caitlin and you wanted her to do a grid post um, based on whatever it is, service or product that you're giving her, um, she could charge you between $230 and $400 for that one particular post. So convert that back. I don't know what the exchange rate is, but um, that just shows you, you know, what you could potentially be paying. So it's interesting to go in there and, um, benchmark what their press packs is compared to what um, this influencer marketing hub um, is saying that they're what their worth is. So then influencer outreach. So how to contact influencers, right? So this is a big thing that I get asked all the time. Um, and I have quite a few friends who are influencers. Um, so yeah, determine the relevant influencers that you want from your research that you've conducted, right? Connect with them on all relevant platforms, like or follow them as your business account on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or whatever platforms they are on. Begin to build relationships with them and engaging with their content. You know, like a few posts, um, and this should be completed um, for one month to get to know them prior to making contact. contact um, you know, you could schedule initial messages and replies, follow-up emails, personalised to each influencer. You know, don't copy and paste the same message to every person. Um, you know, it just, it, it's bad. And most of them prefer actually to be contacted via email because they get so many, oh, that's at the bottom there, they get so many DMs that your message could get lost very quickly. So when you ever email them, this is, I'm speaking from having spoken to these influencers, this is clearly like it's so much better if you get an email from somebody because people don't tend to email um, to try and have you on board as an influencer. You know, then, then you can start to negotiate terms, arrange contract <clears throat> terms and briefing, create, submit, send relevant content and products or details and execute the campaign and then obviously measure results. So, and it, personally, I would say to try and email them and don't DM them, but if you, anything, tailor it, like try and make it as personable as possible, you know, make, re, make re, reference to um, a post that they've recently put up or a story, con like story content that they've covered, um, you know, just, to try and make it a bit more um, uh, engaging and not as sort of dry as what everybody else is probably, um, the way they are probably contacting that particular influencer. Um, so this is just an example. Um, so, uh, hi, um, I don't know, Caitlin. My name is such and such from Pitter Patter. We are a family run business based in Northern Ireland providing an extensive range of baby nursery items, both online and in our stores. We stock well loved brands such as XYZ. You know, we are currently looking for influencers like yourself to work with us. Um, your Facebook, Instagram feed really stood out. Due to your engaging posts, you know, XYZ um, and your followers, we feel that our target market would really relate to your content. You know, we loved your posts about XYZ. If there's something that you'd be interested in, um, let me know and we can discuss this further. Feel free to check out our website to get a better feed for our brand. Hope to hear back from you soon. So just something like that there. Um, so work work on your content plan then with your influencer. What is it that you want the influencer to do? You know, is it a, is it story content? Is it a grid post? Is it a competition? Is it all three? Which platform is it that you want them to use? Is it Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, TikTok, or maybe it's just Instagram? Um, again, what, what format, what length, what is the music going to be? Is there going to be a voiceover? What do you want to include in the video? So I've had people say to me, oh, I break out influencers and um, it's been such a waste of money and such a waste of time. And, and I'm like, okay, so how did you contact them? Oh, I direct messaged them and invited them in for, you know, like a free treatment or whatever. And I says, well, did you stipulate to them, you know, what you would want from, from that? And they're like, oh, no, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, did you ask them? okay, so if I'm going to invite you in for this treatment, 
in exchange for this treatment, I would like you to do three stories and one grid post and one re. Just, just me hypothetical. And they're like, no, we never. So if you don't stipulate what you want, you're going to, you're setting yourself up for disappointment essentially. Um, so yeah, it's really important to plan what it is, what it is that you want with your um, influencer. So then with bigger value, like, um, well, I'm saying bigger value, but um, everybody's value, like what you class as a big value might not be what another business classes as a big value, but it may be a good idea to set up a contract with your influencer. So um, these are some of the typical sections you may choose to include in your own influencer contract. Standard agreement in terms that you're entering into, a contract between the advertiser and the influencer. Timelines of the campaign, how long are you intending to use this influencer for? Um, is it a one-off campaign or do you intend that, you know, to be a long-term relationship um, but um, an advertising the brand? So a contract, um, if you're going to be working with an influencer and it does have high value, I definitely would recommend um, and you're new to all this, maybe, you know, generating, setting up a little contract. And there are loads of templates available online um, for that sort of thing. So it's, they're easy enough to find. So then, so influencer bugaboos. So I was actually writing about this and I was asking the, the, my friends like, who are influencers like, what are your bugaboos? And they were like, what is a bugaboo? And I was like, you know, like something that annoys you. Um, so there are quite a few. So, and this is something, I'm not an influencer. I have like 2000 followers on Instagram, but some people tag me and things. And I'm like, why are they tagging me in that? That's not relevant to me at all. Um, so do not tag influencers in all your posts and stories, especially if you're not working with them. So like um, people will like, you could put up a post, so promoting your new makeup palette and people, um, business owners, it seems to be a thing that they'll go in and they'll tag like on the picture um, loads and loads of influencers and it's the most bizarre thing I don't know why they're doing it obviously to try and get that influencer to share that product or you know to make it look like they're involved when actually they're not and that can be really off-putting for influencers um, and again do not assume that influencers will give your business a shout out just because you've dm'd them they receive lots of messages daily and cannot reply to everyone's requests so some of the messages could be like oh you know, it, it's not, you know, oh, would do, can you just give me a shout out? I've tagged you in my story um, a few times, or could you give me a follow? And it's just like, whenever an influencer has built up such um, a strong following, they're not able to do that all the time. They're not able to just give everybody shout outs and every single business, business owner sort of assumes that they're going to do that. And they'll keep repeatedly sending messages asking for the same thing it's just it's not very bad it's not very good etiquette um so do not make assumptions of what you'll get so yeah like i said previously just you need to stipulate what you want before you start working together so you don't want then any dramas or any handings then afterwards with that particular influencer if they have been disappointing for your business whenever you haven't stipulated what it is that you actually want so um that's just a few pointers so then choosing goals for your campaign. Oh, I'm back, sorry. So um, there's lots of different thing, goals that you can choose, right? So you can go for brand awareness, you could go for lead generation, customer loyalty, audience building, building brand identity, converting to sales, you know, so, you know, maybe you want somebody to go straight to the website and buy that fake town. Maybe you're a brand new business and nobody knows about you. So it's more about building your sort of uh, brand identity um, or, and brand awareness. So get more people, you know, just to recognize who you are. So there is lots of different goals um, that you can look at, look at setting before you um, start working with your particular influencer. There should be some examples coming up. So, that, all right, so these are different ideas that you can go with. So... Um, it could be product placement, unboxing. So unboxing is when like you send somebody a package. Um, 
again, never like just send, never just send, get an influencer's address and send them a parcel and expect them to cover that on your social media if you haven't reached out to them beforehand. Um, it's just bad etiquette. So unboxing, if sending them a gift, a box of whatever it is that you do, and you're showcasing that unboxing. Maybe it's just a press release that you want them to talk about. Maybe it's sponsored content. So if you are, uh, you know, um, working with them on showcasing a particular product or in-store walkabout sponsored content, maybe you have a discount code as well, like a tailored discount code that you want them to use. So it could be Clara 10% or, you know, Clara 10, Clara 15. So discount codes are really good um, if you have a website and you sell a product online and you want to see how well that this influencer marketing campaign has worked, it's so easy to go into Shopify and set up a discount code, give that to the influencer, get them to promote it, and then you can see how many sales you've generated off the back of that discount code. It's quite a good one. Affiliate marketing, social media takeovers. So whenever they come in, maybe, and take over your social media for the day and drive people in from their page to your page and um, brand ambassadors. So you would see a lot of brand ambassadors for different tan brands. So, um, you know, Bella Mianta, Vida Libretta, um, Lucio Tan, Be Bold or Be Perfect. Um, they will have their brand ambassadors and that will constantly post about their tan maybe a blog post or maybe it's just maybe it's just a giveaway maybe you want to do a competition with them so those are just some ideas for you um to help you get started with your um influencer so then measured results so to gauge the success of the campaign it's critical critical that the kpis and results are monitored and recorded influencers should be asked to provide the following data from their platforms after the campaign has ended so their reach, their engagement, stroke clicks, stroke swipes. I meant to say, sorry, I didn't actually have it on the slide here, but um, traditionally up until last year, maybe before last year, I can't remember exactly when it was. So traditionally it was an influencer celebrated when they got to 10,000 followers and you would see influencers on Instagram with their balloons and doing little boomerangs because they've reached 10,000 followers and it's such a big deal. And that was because whenever you reach 10,000 followers, you were able, you, you, you automatically enabled a swipe up to buy function. So if you were a brand working with a 10K follower or influencer, they had the ability to drop in a link directly to your website to buy the product. Um, and this is why it made influencers with over 10,000 followers so valuable. But that Instagram done away with that last year and now everybody has the ability to insert a link um, to buy. So this is why the under 10,000 K followers are now so valuable because anybody can put in a link. You can put in a link directly to your website as well, but the influencers, obviously anybody, any influencer can do that now. So that's why um, the under 10s are so um, valuable as well. So influencers should also we provide with a unique discount code, like I spoke about, um, or a unique link to enable tracking the success. Um, and then you will then monitor the following um, generated by the campaign. If, you, if it's web related, you know, the traffic and then the purchases stroke conversions. And then your results should be recorded um, in a database of, you know, your choice, obviously, you set that all up. So this is just an example of one that I used recently. Um, I don't think that it's a video. So the um so this is Emma. Enjoy everything, Emma. So um this was there's this a business that I work with in town in Oma. It's a new bar, relatively new bar. So the goal was to build new followers, which would in turn um increase the brand awareness. So the influencer of choice was enjoy everything, Emma, and the campaign was a gifted dining experience worth about £150. So it was worth £150, but again, I don't the cost price to the business, I'm not 100% sure what that was. Probably, I don't know, maybe £80, maybe. Um, so the results then, we had a monthly increase in followers of 4.8%. So the, you're on average, your Instagram following every month um, organically should increase by around one and a half to 2%. 
So um, this, in this particular month, it was nearly a 5% increase and that was the month that we used Emma. And um, her, her stories reached um, 1,788 people and her reading reach was 6,800. It had 195 likes and 100 comments within the first, I haven't looked at it recently, but within the first um, week or so. So that was really good. And we got, um, like I said, like the following, that's what we wanted with that was with, we wanted new followers to build brand awareness. And then a couple of years ago, um, this was like a, a glamping business in Mid Ulster. Um, and the goal was to increase bookings. So this was during COVID when things, everything had closed down, but then everything opened up for the summer, remember? And then it closed all down again. But the goal was to increase bookings during the summer of 2020. So the influencer of choice was Dig Mama. So it was Caroline. And the campaign was a gifted stay and collab with other businesses worth approximately £500. So we reached out to um, the business owner, um, new um, Dermot of Freeze, the ladies at Anne Croy, and the guys at the Ponderosa. So it was a two night stay and they give the dinner on one evening. They give the breakfast on the, on the two mornings and then they give another dinner on that evening. So it was quite a good collaboration with um, other businesses in the area, which is a good idea to do sometimes. So the at the time, obviously, probably wouldn't be worth this now because of the price of things, but the, the dinner, the breakfast and the two nights day was probably worth approximately £500 at the time. Well, the results were huge. So we had a monthly increase in followers of 328%. The grid post that Caroline posted had 1,689 likes. And the most important, um, the most important thing here was it was a threefold increase in summer bookings, um, which resulted in just over um, just under three and a half thousand pounds worth of turnover. So, um, like it was a great, great success, and um, relatively, you know, at the time, um, a, an overnight stay in one of these pods I think was ninety pound a night. So, to get that value and to get that those results in return were massive. So that's just um, an example of um, a campaign that I worked on a couple of years ago. And, oh, I think that must be, I must. That is my, the end of my slide. I forgot to put in, a, I thought I had a, a slide in the end for questions, but um, I'm sure Karis probably has, there are probably quite a few questions coming in there maybe, um, if you want to shout away. There have been a few questions coming in, um, so I am just going to open up and look at them. Now, I've already answered all of them, so I'm just going to okay, yeah. and see if you had any anything different to say. So the most recent question that came in was someone wanted to know if you're doing like a social, no one influencers would do like a social media takeover for a short period of time do you have to give them account access so i basically said there's two options you can do a full takeover where you do have to give them full access so they can post the stories and things on on your behalf or you can do what i would refer to as like a semi-account takeover whereby they would send you the media files and then you post them as if it's that person doing it yes would, that, would, would you agree with that it's basically yeah 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 absolutely yeah um, there is another question has just popped up there. Let me see. What's the best method to search influencers in your area? Uh, there is, do you know what? There, it, it's such a tedious job and it really does. It, it's a lot of groundwork. There are actually, um, it, there's no particular like method or software but I do there is a new business I just seen a pop-up here so I don't know if you've seen it but a guy um NI influencers yeah um, I've seen I that. yeah I don't know the format of it uh, apparently it, they don't charge I'm not sure like if you go to them and you say okay I want to work with but most people that I've any agencies that I've had um any dealings with they will charge you a set fee of like a couple hundred pounds to access their database um and it can be worth it um, because they've done all the hard work and if you're not au fait with how Instagram works um, you know it can be quite time consuming so it's weighing up the benefits 
you know, sometimes I'm a great believer in if you can pay someone to do it and it makes your life easier, <laughs> just do it. Um, so there's no actual way, like, obviously there's different hashtags, you know, you could look up hashtags in OMA, um, hashtags in Belfast, hashtags in Armagh, whatever location that it is that you're in. But I definitely do find that it's just a process of sitting down and going through um, like going on to somebody's in, an influencer that you know and then maybe going on and see who follows them and um, actually whenever you hit, whenever you hit follow someone it gives you a suggestion of people to follow underneath that so then you know they're sort of similar to that person so I would use that quite a lot as well um, but unfortunately no there's no there's no real trick of the trade um, area specific but um, there definitely is somebody on Instagram that is starting out. Um, NA Influencers, I think it's called. Um, let me I just... remember seeing that pop up recently as well. I can't remember exactly the ins and outs of it. I think it was, I think it was maybe Belfast Live covered something about them. So um, maybe yeah. it was on there. Um, I'm the same, like, uh, I follow, I'm, I live in Larne. I'm far from Unoma. So if I go on and I look up hashtag Larn, even just on Instagram, you'll find like a lot of influencers or anyone posted in that area. It's a good way to find yeah. them as well. Well, I just, um, there it is. It's called, um, the, 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 the Instagram page is called NA Influencers. So it says, not an agency, matching businesses and Northern Ireland influencers for free. So I'm not too sure um, how this guy makes money, but there obviously is some way of it. Um, and yeah, so he has... Um, he has obviously a database that he's willing to share with you guys. So yeah, if that's of any help to anybody. Yeah, that's, that's, that'd be really useful because I think that's something that's been lacking. Like I know as an agency, we've used tools before, but they're paid for tools and they're not locally specific. It's more for, like you say, larger brands, larger, large budgets yeah. as well. And um, like we used a tool called Upfluence before, which is very good. You can search via budget um area what they're sort of known for and things like that which was good but again uh -huh. only useful I was about to to point out the question that you just answered there <laughs> <laughs> just someone really likes Clara's top <laughs> we were, as we were Christmas Eve but um I, I thought you know what it's cold out here today so I took the label off it and I got it in guns last year <laughs> <laughs> well they, I must be an influencer hashtag I was to say this if you acting as an influencer for Dunn, <laughs> it's very contextually relevant. So that's great if you want to head down to Dunn's now. I don't know if Clara has a different code, but um, yeah. <laughs> there is also a question that's come in there um, relevant to the what we were talking about with the takeover. So can you temporar temp well, temporarily add someone as a user on Instagram? Um, yes, you can. Uh, Clara will probably answer this as well, but um, you can add someone. So if you have met a business suite or business manager set up you can add and you have your accounts linked on that you can add people via their email address in the user section and just say what you do or don't want them to have access to so what that does yeah. it enables you as well to just give them access to post maybe you don't want to give them full access to go and change your bank details of you advertising or anything so you don't give them your logins to instagram you give them access as a user so hopefully that answers that Clara there's another question here and um, for a startup brand what's the best thing to ask influencers to do post a video grid picture or reel when gifting oh. item is worth 150 to 300 pounds it depends on what the I suppose it depends on what the item if it's an item uh, like is it a visually appealing item you know it really just depends to be honest Instagram now is all about reels and I find that anything that I post for clients that is a read gets far more engagement, far more views than a, than a static grid post. Um, so um, I would, you know, if they're willing to do a read, um, all well and good. But I definitely think that, I think that story content and, and reads get a lot more traction than, than just, I mean, in the past, grid posts like that one with Caroline, Dig Mama, like reads weren't a, even out then, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um 2020 I don't think they were they might have just been coming out but there's a massive focus now in video so um I would definitely try and get them to do story content and if it's a toss-up between grid or real I would go real definitely and those things, then they can add a link 
easily without uh-huh. directing your bio or anything too. Yes, so exactly. we have answered that. There's one more that's come in here. Other than the calculator that you've shown, what are realistic prices to pay per post, stories, collabs, etc.? Can be very hard to justify some high prices. What exactly. would you? Say? What you would you know what? This is part? exactly the problem. Like I genuinely get some media packs, drug press packs. And I'm just like looking at the prices and I'm shocked. And then they vary so much. It's not like a monitored, like there's not like a baseline. There's not really because they, they seem to just charge whatever it is they want. Um, but, you know, sometimes they'll do things for like, you know, if it's a small local business, like we had, I had um, a very popular, massive, massive influencer do work for me um because she is local and it was a local dentist in town and she had a bit of composite bottom done in the front of her tooth and it would have been worth about 800 pound um the procedure and um but she would have traditionally charged like um quite a lot of money for that but she she didn't because she says it was a local business she wanted to work and help them and that that dentist has since said to me like last last june i remember him he rang me and he says cara I have never in my 26 years been as busy. Like you, could, you can't get an appointment with him for months now. So um, some of the influencers, you know, don't necessarily, you know, they might send you their press pack, but they might, you know, work with you um, in terms of the price. Like it's probably, it's probably a bit like a rate card. It's probably negotiable. Um, you know, like traditionally when you got rate cards sent through, like for a magazine or a newspaper, you would like never pay what was on the rate card. But yeah, um, it can be it can be hard definitely to justify some of the prices. But this is where I would be asking for um, previous examples of collaborations with, you know, um, with results from that. You know, if if, I'm, if you're going to charge me three hundred and fifty pound, and I'm gifting you a, a present or a gift or you know a um, service or you know, like a gifted stay that's, that's worth £300, you know, you're down £600 before anything's actually happened. So um, I would be asking for some examples of previous, like, um, uh, previous collaborations that have been, um, you know, positive or had have, had good results. I suppose this as well is where, like you'd said before, the level of influencer comes in like the likes of those nano influencers they may may not be at the monetary stage yet they may be happy to yeah. post in return for a free service or a free experience yeah. or a product as you say so if you're going for someone that is charging an extortionate amount and they've got twenty thousand followers maybe yeah well a little bit smaller to start with to see how it works and yeah, yeah. it'll be a learn but there is like like clara says there's no set rate or structure i think i i seen I can't remember, it was probably a year ago, so it might be even more now, but Kim Kardashian charges like a million pounds per Instagram post, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. Uh-huh. Um, but that is the scale it can go to. And I'm sure there's probably someone, I don't think she's the most followed anymore. So I'm sure there's someone out there charging even more at this stage. Um, yeah, exactly. So- yeah, you know, because like at the minute I'm trying to, like for example, like at the minute I I take on a new client and it's pregnancy related, and I'm trying to source. So like, I, like I'm saying to you, like saying how hard it is, and it is hard to find like pregnancy influencers because obviously you're only pregnant for a certain length of time. That person is only valuable to you for a certain period if you have a specifically pregnancy related product. Um, so I'm having to search like I knew loads of pregnant people last year but they've had their babies and they're of no use to me now so yeah um, I have to start afresh just and start doing research and looking for people who are expecting babies so um, I'm just sure like, an well, Molly May if you've got a good budget <laughs> well, like, that's why I used her as an example earlier yeah. on <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but listen if you don't ask you know maybe she would gladly take this product and review it for free I don't know but probably not um, but yeah, I found a few smaller scale, lo- like local Northern Ireland based ones, but they have a good following. But um, yeah, I just need to get a few more on board. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that is all of the questions. So thank you very much, Clara. I just have a couple of things to say before we finish off. Can you see my screen? OK, Clara? Yeah, uh-huh, I can. Yeah. So obviously the 
digital support program is finished up now like we are fully recruited just finishing off the last bits of it and this is the last webinar as part of the program but as part, part of council support there still is the transform your business program which is still live um so this is just a bit of information on it so there is a, a digital area to that program um as you can see here so if you do need further support maybe you didn't avail of the support on the digital support program just so you know this is available and um, you can fill in uh, the uh, online expression of interest form for this program or you can email transform at innovate-ni.co.uk once i come out of this screen share and everything i'll put those links into the chat and just leave it for a second if you want to grab those um or actually i might do you know what i'll do i'll send it in the follow-up email to this because it'll be easier so you're not uh trying to grab it before the webinar ends so just so you know about it the contact details are there but i will send it um after the webinar as well so if you want to have a look at that in case you need any more support you can have a have a go at that but apart from that um I will share a copy of the slides and the recording with everybody before um, Monday. I'm hope, hoping to do it today. Sometimes it takes a wee bit uh, of time for the video to upload to YouTube. So if it's a bit slower, it's YouTube. It's not me. Um, but thank you for joining us today and any other of the webinars that you came to. And we hope you find them very useful. So and thank you, Clara, for being with us today. Thank you. All right. Thank you.